Williams. That was first person. Look for the press after the foul shots. There's Southern head coach Ben Job. 422 victories in 22 years of coaching. And on the other side, Mike Jarvis in his third year at George Washington. This is the third time he's been to the NCAAs. He took Boston University twice. Only one out of two goes down, but the Colonials get the basketball back. They're going to wait for the big man to get back, too. There's an idea. <laughs> Nimbo Hammonds, three-pointer on the way. Got it. Well, that's what you're going to find out. They're not afraid to shoot it, but this way, on the other end, they're ready to take off with Tim's. Great steal, though, by George Washington. They were alert. Searles. Dare. Yes. Strong inside. Don't know if he's going to get away. He put the ball on the floor all day, though. He just needs to go up strong. No one else is going to take it away from him. GW off to a 6-0 lead. White. Baseline. Backboard. Down into the corner, Searles. Yes. And there's Yika Dare. That's why you can shoot at any time when you got a seven-footer near the basket. He's always going to get that second effort. Good move by Ben Job right now. He needs a timeout. Settle his team down. Eight-nothing Colonials. We'll be back to Tucson after this. make John Deere mowers. Everyone came out for something special. After all, the two millionth John Deere lawn product had just rolled off the line. Shear operator Don Carroll was there. His son Steve installed the engine. In fact, just about everyone in Horican lent a hand. With so many people dedicated to making mowing your lawn a little better, it's easy to see why most people would rather own a John Deere if they could. And now, Two million mowers later, they can. With prices starting at just $349, there's no reason not to stop into your John Deere dealer for a peek. Compliments of the people in a town called Horican at a company called John Deere. It takes strength to go climbing seven days a week. why one compact pickup powers you with the biggest full-size V6 engine you can get. Only Chevy S10 Tahoe 4x4. Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. May I help you? Oh, I got right through. Yeah, here's what I need. Four tickets. I need. Two tickets. How many tickets? Two tickets. Seven. Eight o'clock. Five. Central Rock. Yeah. That will be fine. Thank you. Right. When tickets for the largest concert tour ever held in North America went on sale, Ticketmaster relied on Sprint's 800 service to do the job. Hey, if Sprint can handle all this, it can certainly work for you, too. Cafe Pasquale's in Santa Fe. Breakfast means burritos with green chili. And CBS This Morning with Harry and Paula. CBS This Morning. Breakfast for your head. This is where Dare will be a force today. Great offensive move inside. Post feed. Knows what to do once he gets the ball. Good dribble. Good ball fake. To the rim. Then, of course... Yinka and George Washington off to an 8 0 lead, eight minutes to go here in the first half, and the Jaguars still looking for their first basket. <laughs> Loose ball, Sonny Holland down with it up ahead, Dirk Searles one on one. Doesn't find a shot, Yinka down the lane. Both teams, high pace, high level. George Washington's bench, the 10 against 5, the Iron 5 is Southern. It'll be a great game for 40 minutes. Turnover. The lead, Searles. But understand, Southern will come back. They're that type of team. You're going to get complacent. George Washington has done this before. They've had trouble maintaining this intensity. It's tough to jump out big in the NCAA tournament. Remember, Southern was down 15 to Georgia Tech. Terry Tim's three-pointer doesn't go. Scales chases it down. 
looks for room on the baseline and doesn't find it. Oh, good pass to White, who's fouled. It, look, it looks for Southern to get comfortable with Scales as in his offensive game inside. Once they get him the ball, his quickness will bother George Washington inside. They haven't done that yet. Some of our viewers will be leaving us uh, in a little bit to see some games of interest in your local area, and those are the games upcoming. You will, of course, be kept up to date on the progress of this game with scoring reports and highlights. And Leonard White gets the Jaguars on the board at the 17.06 mark. Southern's won those teams. They're going to take about 10 or 15 shots, maybe shoot about 25%. But then all of a sudden, they get their spurt going, as we saw against Georgia Tech. Anything can happen with the Southern team. 10-2, Colonials in the lead. One of the teams doing the Atlantic 10 proud in this tournament, huh? There's a takeaway. Darius Mims missed the layup. Good try at the save, but back comes GW. Pearsall down low, back on top. Sorrell's three-pointer on the way. He's in a rhythm. But understand this, as good as George Washington's playing right now, so was Georgia Tech early in the game. And Southern, as poorly as they were shooting, they got that one spurt with 4.49 to go, and they got right back into it. Georgia Tech never recovered. Scale pulls up. And Dare comes down with it. Southern, 0 for 7 from the floor. Hammond for 3. And Searles down the lane. Good, call. Foul. Good position. The fact that right now Ben Job has got his three front line players, when you look at Williams as well as Leonard, White, and Scales inside, they should do a better job now in offensive rebounding on those long jump shots. Off the George Washington bench for Yinka Dare comes Bill Brigham, the 6'8 senior from East Weymouth, Massachusetts. Started every game this season until the first round of the NCAA tournament. He's a fifth-year senior who transferred over from Boston University with his coach, Mike Jarvis. He was in the NCAA tournament with Jarvis in 1990 at BU. Tim flies inside. He has the green light against Jackson State in the tournament championship. He took over the whole second half, has the green light from Ben Job any time to look to score. He turns it on, Southern will be back in the game. First field goal of the afternoon for Southern University. Brigham, way long. Tough to come off the bench and just get it and shoot it. You gotta get a rhythm of the game. Gets Searles in the air and then puts it out. Oh, what a shot. That's his game. What a shot by Terry Tim. He knows this is desperation time for them. They got to get back. Now we got a ball game. It's down to seven. There goes GW Spurt. Five minutes gone here in the first half. Sony Holland off the dribble. He's better inside with his back to the basket. Mims pulls up for the three. Doesn't fall for him. And Hammond fouled with the rebound. Take a look at slick smooth Terry Tim. This is what makes Tim such a threat. He'll, he'll read you what you do defensively. Watch. Gives a little hesitation. Gets Searles off his feet. Great moves to the basket. What I think Southern's got to realize, if you're going to shoot the long jump shot, don't get too deep with your front line rebounders. Come back another step and you'll get those missed shots. Javon Scales guilty of his first personal. Kwame Evans, the freshman, off the bench and nails a three. He had 19 off the bench the other day. Looks like he hasn't left anything behind him. A freshman, very talented player for George Washington. 19 points in 25 minutes and five for five from three-point land. Exactly. See the long shot, long rebound? Williams took it that time. There's Good a foul ball. on Alvin Pearsall. It's exactly what Williams did is what they need to do. When you shoot the ball long, especially threes, the ball comes off longer. What Southern has been doing is underneath the basket rebounding, looking for the second effort. The ball came back that time to the foul line. Williams got it. Now they get another possession. 44, Omo Moses into the game for George Washington. 16-6, the Colonials with the lead. White 
top of the key, three-pointer, got it. That's the confidence they have now. This is how they hang. You got to credit Bet Joe. He keeps a loose program, has fun playing, and points me nothing. They know they've got their 80-shot syndrome to get them back in the game. And there's a foul on number 30, Darius Mims. Good job by the officials. Get on something early before it becomes a problem without penalizing anybody. Moses now is the point guard with Pearsall. Both point guards, Moses and Pearsall, did a great job of controlling Georgia Tech by running their offense, I mean, against New Mexico the other day. And, and that's the balance that Jarvis has going to his bench. This is Moses, number 44. Moses had eight assists in that game against New Mexico. There's a takeaway from White. That's the quickness. Tim. And Hammonds with another rebound. Moses back in a hurry, non-stop down the lane. Brigham picks up the loose ball and scores. Brigham's that type of junk player. He's all around the basket, always around loose balls, and that's his job description for George Washington. 18 to 9, George Washington doubling up on Southern here with 13 to play. Whistle blows and that foul as Torrey Williams had the turnaround. That's a good counter. Every once in a while, you got to come back and use your inside offense. And when you do that, you're going to draw the fouls. But now the defense will try to help out and double team the post play, which gives you better balance and time to shoot the outside perimeter shot. With this Southern team, you never know where it's going to come from. Bigger Torrey Williams in the game against Georgia Tech had no points. Four rebounds, no steals, no block shots, almost wasn't there, yet they come down here and they go right inside to him. That's what's so important for, I think, the front line to establish some type of inside game for Southern because Dare has not been challenged to get him in foul trouble. They've got to try to do that before this half is over. He hits them both. And into the game now, instant excitement for Southern University. 5'8 sophomore Vincent Jones. I really like him. He is the one player they all respect. This kid is the silent leader on this basketball team, number 15. Jones underneath got the bucket and the foul. Excellent screen on the weak side. There should have been a switch or at least talk so you can recover defensively. Jones could have made the switch. They made a great right now. Watch the up screen. Jones should help out. Goes up strong. Jones gets a three-point play inside. Good call from the bench. Good pass by Bringham. That's personal number two on Darius Mims. 31 at the line is Vaughn Jones, not to be confused with number 15 for Southern, Vincent Jones. All right, George Washington winning early, trying to earn a trip to Seattle, Washington, and the West Regional. We'll keep you posted on this game, but we're getting set now to go back to the Hoosier Dome. For the second game at that site today, Dick Stockton and Al McGuire will call Oklahoma State against Louisville. Take it away, guys. And welcome to the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, Indiana. Midwest region, second round action. Oklahoma State of the Big Eight, the number five seed, taking on the Louisville Cardinals of the Metro Conference, seeded number four. The survivor here will take on Indiana and a big dramatic victory over Xavier, 73 to 70, and they'll meet the winner against Indiana next week in the Midwest Regional Semifinals in St. Louis. Hi again, everyone. Dick Stockton and Al McGuire. And of all the players talked about during this region, the one more than any, including Calvert Cheney, is a guy they call Big Country, Brian Reeves, the big seven-foot center and a great offensive player for Oklahoma State, Al. You know, Dick, we've had a lot of fun with him, Big Country in the small town and so forth. But this kid is a ball player. He has the, his biggest asset is his hands. He has soft hands. Anything thrown any place near him, he's going to hold. And plus, he can finish on a shot. He had a great game in round one and looking for more of the same. He is from a little town, and this is what the tournament really is all about, Gans, Oklahoma. That's it when you're in Gans, population 346. They've got a post office, they've got a school, and then, then as they say, you're out of town. It's not a big town at all. Maybe they have a convenience store now. That's probably the hoop that he broke in getting to be a big player. How big is he, huh? Well, the third largest building in town is big country. <laughs> so Brian Reeves now 
That's what Louisville has to stop today. Denny Crum said, Brian Reeves, we have to keep the ball out of his hand. Yeah, Brian Reeves to play. I got him on my all-tractor team. <laughs> what about Louisville now? There's a difference here, a contrast. Oklahoma State is a physical team. Louisville more athletic, crash the boards, and a lot of three-point shooting. Well, what the Cardinals want to do is get you into a ping-pong match. They want transition up and down the court. They want to hit the boards. They also have a deep rotation. They can go back without Denny missing the man in the nine-man rotation or missing the stroke. All right, the starting lineups for the game. Oklahoma State, Milton Brown, Fred Burley at forward, Brian Reeves the center, and Randy Rutherford and Brooks Thompson, the two guards that have to have a good game, according to Al, and he's right. <laughs> Louisville will have Troy Smith and Dwayne Morton, their leading scorer. Clifford Rozier, the big man in the middle, and Greg Miner, and Keith Legree, Legree the point guard. Denny Crum, both Denny Crum and Eddie Sutton both achieved their 500th coaching victories this year and Crum has guided Louisville to two NCAA championships and seven times into the final four for Louisville as a school and Eddie Sutton with his back towards you he also had his 500th victory and he has brought Oklahoma State to the NCAA tournament for the third straight year even the great Henry Iba who passed away on January 15th never got the Cowboys in the big show three years in a row so Eddie Sutton has done it wherever he's been Creighton Arkansas Kentucky and here at Oklahoma State when I coached against him, he used to coach at Creighton he was an unbelievable coach then and this today he's great for going back door the officials in this game John Clockerty Rusty Herring and JC Leinbach Louisville the higher seed will be in white meaning number four and Oklahoma State in black Reeves who's averaging 20 a game and 10 rebounds on the year the big eight player of the season tip controlled by Louisville there's their speed right off the bat and Keith Legree misses the shot Reeves cleared ball handler as well at Hal <laughs> He brings up a couple of steps and he better kick it off to the guard. Uh, his, his conditioning suspects. Reeves puts Oklahoma State in front. Eddie Sutton was telling me that he's been trying to develop that hook shot. He doesn't pick. All right, a quick flash of big country for Oklahoma State, but we're going to switch you to another spot in the country. We're going to the southeast where Iowa is playing Wake Forest. It's Big Ten against ACC, and two minutes into that game, let's join Tim Ryan and Ann Myers. We are tied at six with 17.29 to go in the first half here at Nashville. This is second round action in the Southeast region. Tim Ryan with Ann Myers, and the first substitution of the game made by the Hawkeyes. It is Russ Millard, the freshman from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He joins Kevin Smith, Val Barnes, well, A.C. Earl, and James Woodard. The six points for Iowa have all been from the outside. Wake Forest, I should say nine points now in the first three-pointer, but Wake Forest is really sagging in, taking away the inside game of A.C. Earl. And on the other hand, Wake Forest has been very patient on offense. They've gotten the ball inside on some of the penetration. Iowa started out in the zone, and now they switch up into a man. Val Barnes hitting that three-pointer, the senior from Wichita. 9-6 Iowa lead. These tough teams from two tough conferences. And Hicks hits a jumper. That's a big bucket by Derek Hicks, 6-9 senior, because a lot of teams have given him that free throw shot, 15-footer, because he has not, in the last few games, been hitting his shot. And that's a big bucket as far as confidence-wise for him. Hicks averaging 5-5 five, five a game coming into the tournament. In the opener against Tennessee Chattanooga, he was most effective on the board with 16 rebounds. Turnover. Hicks controls to Childress, and Childress almost lost it to Winters. Iowa getting back on deep. Oh, not sure oh. we're, we're setting up in a man or a zone. Harrison missed, but Rodney Rogers did not. 10-9, Wake. Iowa looks a little tentative. They're hitting their outside shots, which obviously is going to keep them in the game. There they miss one, but they're passing the ball a little bit slow on the perimeter. It'll be Wake Forest ball when we return. 10-9.
Around every corner, financial questions, choices, surprises. When you need direction, the Principal Financial Group can guide you toward your goals. With flexible insurance, solid investment strategies, stability you can count on. No wonder people have been coming to the Principal for over a century. To secure your future, to get an advantage, get the Principal Edge, the Principal Financial Group. Choosing your first new car sure can be complicated. There are cars that promise you safety. Cars that are well-built and well-backed. Cars that won't leave you stranded. Cars that give you a break on the price. Even cars that help with your down payment. But Chevrolet makes it easy to get all of the above in the Chevy Cavalier, the lowest-priced car in America with standard anti-lock brakes. Test drive Chevy Cavalier today at your neighborhood Chevrolet dealer. These days, people who want to save money on lunch are brown bagging it. Because McDonald's original hamburger is still just 59 cents. Our delicious cheeseburger is 69 cents. And that is no baloney. You are here. She has the traveler's checks here. Uh-oh. Well, how about American Express traveler's checks for two? The only checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. It's pretty serious. Light Gear by L.A. Timmy. Things like upper class of sneakers on the court. That is real cool. What have you thought of this? Some big college AAA master's degree <laughs> having. There must be some brainy mugs. If people start having too much fun with this, they're going to ban it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta own the light if you want to own the night. senseless murder one man vowed to solve. You still think I did it? Yeah, I sure do. Robert Conrad in a psychological thriller, Sworn to Vengeance, Tuesday. Don't hit that remote switch. We've still got basketball for you. This is outside Memorial Gymnasium at Vanderbilt, where today Michigan State has just beaten Vandy 5-1 to one in the first of two. Let's play two. Well, inside, we're going to play two as well. And it is 10-9, Wake Forest leading Iowa. Iowa and White, Wake Forest and Gold. Later here, it'll be Kentucky and Utah. Children banks it. Wake Forest looks very patient on that offense, breaking that half-court press by Iowa. They have not rushed any shots whatsoever. Nice pass inside. Triple team and Looking Bill was all by himself. Looking Bill off well here in the early going for Iowa. 15.09 to go, first half. 12 of them, Demon Deacon lead. Rogers outside and now feeds it off to Childress and they'll set up the half court. Rogers going down deep. Tempo has been very slow for both teams. Just kind of a chess match. They're just feeling each other out. Oh. Harrison tries to lob. It's batted away by Looking Bill. Both pretty content to play in that half-court game. Looking Bill, good move underneath. The feed for Kenyon Murray, but they fail to convert, and the Deacons come away. Oh. Rogers. That's the little count, and he'll go to the line. Rodney Rogers, the 6'7 junior from Durham, North Carolina. Six points for him. Good ball movement that time by the Deacons, and Childress is really the one that was the catalyst in starting that. He got it down quickly and hit the corner. The ball came back around to him, and as Rogers was getting down low in the lane, he made a nice pass inside. Iowa sends in Montero Glasper at guard, number 13. They have Kenyon Murray, reserve forward in. They had 10 points in the victory over Northeast Louisiana in the first round. A freshman from Battle Creek, Michigan. Hicks rebounding on the miss by Rogers from the free throw line. Mark Lucas in at guard for Wake, number 25, a junior from Girard, Pennsylvania. Good outside shooter. Joining Childress in the backcourt. Owens. Wake Forest by five. 
six points for Owen, who had 22 in the victory in the first round over Tennessee Chattanooga. Wake Forest in a man-to-man -man defense. AC Earls hook missed everything. Turnover by Iowa. 13-38 remaining first half. Iowa by by five, 16 to 11, and make it seven. Rodney Rogers getting the hot hand for Wake Forest. Val Barnes quickly the other way won't go for him. Owens couldn't handle the rebound. Looking Bell. Way Looking Bell. Ten points now for Iowa. Cuts it back to five. Tim Ryan with Ann Myers here at Nashville. Second round action, Southeast region. Number four, Iowa. Number five, Wake Forest. Travel call, Iowa ball. Well, as soon as I had said that things had kind of slowed down, both teams, all of a sudden, it, they just turned it up. They vote them frantically waving down court. The benches are along the baseline here at Memorial Gymnasium, not on the sideline as usual, and it's a rather unusual Basketball arena at Vanderbilt. Wake Forest 18 to 13. Russ Millard back in the Iowa lineup, number 52, the freshman from Cedar Rapids. He has the ball. And then Murray kicks it back out. Offensively with Iowa against the zone, if they, as long as they pass the ball and get into those seams, they'll get an open shot. They have had several opportunities, but they've hesitated and then just look to pass. Al Barnes off for Murray. And out. Shoulders up high to grab the rebound. Wake Forest has been very patient on offense. Iowa in the zone. They switch, they've got Val Barnes on Childress. Both teams kind of switching things up on the defense. The guards will stay a man, and then they switch up top if defensively down low, they'll stay in the zone. Shoulders back out to Lucas. Lucas can't get a shot. Lucas had the room, drives, and he's fouled. First foul on Murray. You can see in the rebound department, Wake Forest, the bigger men so far having the edge. And both teams shooting pretty well, but Wake at 70%. Rodney Rogers off best, eight points, two rebounds for the Demon Deacons. Well, one of the reasons Owens and Rogers are getting their shots is because of the guards. The guards are able to get the ball inside of them. Trelawney Owens has taken uh, one or two baseline shots. On the other hand, Iowa against the zone of Wake Forest has not been able to get the ball inside. Lukenville has been a bright spot for them outside inside, but AC Earl has touched the ball twice and he's been able to pass once for two points and then have a hook shot that wasn't even close. Lucas missed, missed the uh, first of two, 18 to 13. These teams are already into the Sweet 16. Indiana having some problems with Xavier before advancing and Virginia, a winner earlier today. Lucas missed both. Smith driving into traffic. All tangled up with the big guys, but Iowa controls. Winters. Well, Iowa is coming off a season-high 25 turnovers against Northeast Louisiana, so you would think that Tom Davis has talked to his team about really taking care of the basketball. his way up. Good job by Russ Millar, the freshman from Cedar Rapids. And the Hawkeyes have to continue to try and get it inside, even if they can draw a foul. Try and get it to their big guys. Georgetown, court. Lucas misses, good follow, Hicks. That time the Hawkeyes really sagged on defense, they challenged Childress to take that shot, but Iowa has to do a better job blocking out Wake Forest. Wake 
this is really attack the offensive board. Deacons by five. Iowa trying to get into their half court set. Webb in the middle and he hits from the lane. Jay Webb, 6'8", senior from San Jose. That's a nice pass inside by Winters to the high post. Iowa has not used that high post as of yet, and that was the first time. Webb giving Earl a rest. Wake Forest so far out rebounding Iowa, and they lead the nation in rebounding, the Hawkeyes do, with an 11.3 margin. Iowa averages 43 and a half rebounds to Wake Forest's 38 rebounds. So Iowa just has been kind of passive. I mean, they're concentrating on defense, obviously, but then they need to block out. Rodney Rogers for three. He'll hurt you from everywhere. 11 points. He shot the three this year. He's now 23 of 62. Both teams have really sagged down from their guards' positions to challenge the guards to take their shots. And a foul from behind. That could have been an intentional call there. Winters driven out with a push. Well, Tom Davis definitely wants intentional because of the aggressiveness of the foul. But because Winters was going up to dunk the ball, you can see Hicks coming from behind, and he's. The ball's there, but you see his left hand, he just grabs him and kind of pull, gives him a shove. And that's where the intention should be fouled. Even though a guy's going for the ball, you've got to look at the aggressiveness of the foul. 23 to 17. You saw the early score in that Oklahoma State game. We understand they have a power problem in Indianapolis in that region. Now, those of you who have been switched to our game, uh, we hope you'll enjoy it while you're with us, but we do intend to take you back to the game you were watching as soon as uh, power can be restored there. So meanwhile, enjoy Iowa and Wake Forest. 8.56 remains here in the first half. Wake up 43 to 18. Winners on the line for Iowa. Make it 23 to 19. 8.56 left to play first half. Final Four, April 3rd on CBS. The higher you go, the more power you need. I go around. I was strong as I could be. I go around. Nothing ever got to me. That's why up here, they depend on the most horsepower ever in a turbo diesel pickup. I go around. Chevrolet. The most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Now at Goodyear, you can save 50% on the second tire when you buy one tire at the regular price. That's half off Goodyear premium all-season radials for cars and light trucks. Any way you look at it, you save. Only at Goodyear now. I'm on my way to Atlanta, Georgia to see what makes Ace the place. It's got to be the value, John. Like a heavy-duty Rubbermaid laundry basket for just $2.88 and this Ace 34-gallon wheel trash can for only $9.77. Hey, Ace is America's place for better value. This is Larry. This is his package. While Larry sleeps, the UPS Total Track System works round the clock. Tracking any air or designated ground package. It even records the recipient's signature. So now, any time, Larry can get the status of his package in seconds. Larry doesn't work around the clock, but his delivery company does. UPS, the package delivery company more companies count on. Too many businesses today leave their customers up in the air. But Allstate is different. Your Allstate agent's job is to keep you secure for years to come. To stick by you so that you stay with Allstate for your car insurance and home insurance for years for life. Watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. We're in Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, so the college bands are contributing their performance.
Oklahoma Music. In the city of Nashville this afternoon on a beautiful, bright spring day. Baseball outside, hoops inside. March Madness in Nashville. 43 to 19, Wake Forest on top. Tim Ryan with Ann Myers, 8.50 to go first half. Well, something to look at in this first half so far. AC Earl right there. He finally gets one knocked down and into the game, but he has been held scoreless in this first half and has not been a factor defensively either. Kevin Smith sets up the half court for Iowa. Looking Bill. Back to Kevin Smith. Try to feed it inside the Barnes and Wake broke it up. Let's see who gets the ball. Well, that's the first time the Hawkeyes have penetrated against that zone. Might have been an inadvertent whistle. Scott Thornley apparently blew the whistle and he's now consulting with Richie Ballesteros. And this is where it's really hard for the coaches to see Tom Davis standing down on one end. And usually in, in other arenas where the coaches are right there, they can go to the middle of the floor and find out what the official's doing or calling. And that, these coaches are kind of in the fog right now, except Dave Odom, because it's down at their end. And he's well, Odom's got the advantage right now because Tom, now, Tom has taken a long walk from the other end of the court. Now, this is Memorial Gymnasium in Vanderbilt. Davis got all the way down to the official scorer's bench where he is, is right now. <laughs> His team's got the ball, but I think he wants to know what's going on. Absolutely. It's a road trip to get there. I think he had to make a plane change. Well, we know Dave Odom got his run in today, and Tom Davis just got his walk in. Well, this was an unusual spot. 14,600 fans crammed in here. We're down below the level of the court. We need periscopes to call a game from here. It was originally built as a concert stage and a basketball floor back in 1960, and they've just added on seating over the years to this present capacity. Well, the coaches just want to know what's going on. That's <laughs> However long they have to walk to find <laughs> out. Well, we did not get any kind of positive results here. Uh, well, we're in no position to get information either. No, that's for sure. <laughs> We'd have to send a carrier pigeon. Right now... The score still stands 23 to 19, and it remained Iowa ball, which was the key thing that happened. Smith hits for three. Kevin Smith, the junior from Fort Worth. And we're down to a point now. Iowa trailing by one. Wade looking, Bill, right on the ball. Good aggressive play, trying to get his team up defensively. Twenty-three to twenty-two. Wake Forest with the ball and a one-point lead. And for three, Childress. Five points for Randolph Childress, the sophomore from Clinton, Maryland. Well, Iowa looks a little bit more aggressive coming out, attacking that zone now, the last two, three possessions. Winters cuts it back to a two-point margin. Oklahoma State, 2 nothing. our last score from there against Louisville. And the clock is still out. There's a power problem in Indianapolis, and so that game has uh, been held up, at least for a time, and we have brought you to this one. Those of you who are watching that game will return you there as soon as they get power restored in Indianapolis. Hicks from outside. Oh! And it's rebounded by the Hawkeyes' James Winters. Kevin Smith off the front iron. Barnes rebounding. For Earl, fall away is good. First basket for A.C. Earl. And we're tied at 26. pressing down the floor on that inbound. Both teams have been pretty patient in the half-court game, but when they've gotten the running going, both teams have taken advantage of that because the defense has not been able to get back and adjust to where the offense is running at them. Jelani Owens, nowhere to go on the baseline. Time is called. 6.14 to go. We're tied at 26. First half. <laughs> 
are better things to do than having to think about how much you're paying for long distance. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this stuff. So AT&T makes it easy. With the iPlan, you get a good deal no matter how you call. No lists, names, or hassles. I is for simple. To switch to AT&T free, call 1-800-582-7800. I is for individual, only from AT&T. Before we could map out how far the Seville STS would go before its first scheduled tune-up, we first had to create a new map, big enough to chart the durability of Cadillac's North Star V8, a map that spans 100,000 miles, or the equivalent of four trips around the world. The Seville STS North Star system by Cadillac. Changing the way you think about American automobiles, 100,000 miles at a time. One-topping pizzas, a salad for four, even cookies, dinner for four, just $13.99. A great reason to stop and smell the pizza. You forgot to pay me. You shrink from human contact. You avoid each other like the plague. You are not you yet. Morning breath. It's as if the sticky, pasty film in your mouth is affecting your mind. But there's hope. There's scope. Scope's antibacterial action kills millions of morning breath bacteria. So no wonder Scope helps get your whole mouth clean. Suddenly your breath's minty fresh, and so is your outlook. Morning breath's a problem, but you can kiss it goodbye with Scope. Back in Nashville, second round action, Southeast region. That's A.C. Earl the first there with a black cap on. And the proud father of A.C. Earl II, who is performing here for Iowa today. You can see both teams shooting very well. Iowa 10 of 16, Wake 11 of 16. And the Hawkeyes losing two players to the flu overnight. Jim Bartles, who plays quite a bit. And Kevin Skillett, also a man who's had his minutes over the course of the year. And they like to use a lot of folks out there, so they're missing two from the bench today. Barnes inside for Earl. Well, the one thing you have to give credit to the Hawkeyes for, there's a great move right there. I think a lot of people wanted the travel, but boy, A.C. Earl's legs are so long, he made a light pivot move, and they're going to tap the basket. A.C. the first wants a three-pointer on that one. But I was just going to say, the Hawkeyes have done a good job as far as everybody getting involved in the offense because Earl has not scored for them. Wake Forest has done a good job keeping the ball out of his hands, but he makes a nice move inside there. All right, Daddy likes that action. Earl to the line. 28-26, chance for a three-point play. Second foul on Hicks. <laughs> Lucas rebounding for Wake. <laughs> Children. Three. No. Ah. Follow. Good. Rogers. And there you talk about the big body as far as screening out. Iowa really has to concentrate on Rodgers and Owens, but not only the big body, they're so quick. And it's difficult sometimes when you get a big guy that's slow of foot like an A.C. Earl cannot screen out somebody as quick as a Rodney Rodgers. Earl, nice move inside. Lucas commits the foul that time, and Earl more aggressively going to the basket now. We're tied at 28. Also, you see the defense for Wake Forest. Hicks kind of getting caught behind A.C. Earl, and Iowa doing a much better job getting him the ball and moving the ball around the perimeter, which leaves him open, and he's a nice little move right there, coming back to the left side and, and creating the foul. But A.C. Earl really has to get involved in this offense. And Iowa, I think, has done a good job as far as kind of taking their time. They didn't force things into it. One more free throw for Earl would make him the second all-time scorer at the University of Iowa. He has the Hawkeyes up by one, 5.17 to go. Two substitutes ready to come in. Glassbearer for Kevin Smith. 
in the backcourt. And they'll wait on the next one. Tom Davis says that he has really improved his game as far as rebounding passing this year. So a pair by A.C. Earl, and he'll uh, get a rest. And he goes to the bench as the second leading all-time scorer at Iowa. Jay Webb comes in to replace him, the senior from San Jose. Number 42. Good effort there. A flying interception by Glasper. And Glasper with a dish for Webb. Iowa bench comes alive. 32 to 28. Hawkeyes by four. Monterre Glasper with a great steal. And the defense creates the offense for Iowa. Childress and Lucas, the backcourt for Wake. Banks in the lineup at forward with Owens and Rogers. Zoning down at the baseline. Owens missing. Last for rebounding. Murray. Thirty-two to thirty-four to twenty-eight. Iowa. Timeout called. Four thirteen to go in the first half. And watch Glasper fly in here and make that interception. There are cars with advanced engineering. There are cars that make you comfortable. There are cars that are well protected. There are cars that protect their occupants well. There are cars equipped the way you want. And cars that are easy to own now. Which one should be your new car? All of the above. Chevy Lumina Euro Sedan. Test drive a Chevy Lumina Euro today at your neighborhood Chevrolet dealer. It has a powerful overhead valve engine. Smooth five-speed transmission. Has the best resale value of any make. And comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. The cost? Just $1,999. It's the John Deere 12 and a half horsepower STX 38 lawn tractor. At just $19.99, it's our lowest price ever. Dean Witter believed every success story was unique. We have a sacred trust to protect our investors. Whether it's the success of a small business. To maintain conservative policies. Saving for college. To put the interest of our clients first. Or planning an early retirement. From getting in on the ground floor to getting all the way to the top, Dean Witter is there to help every client make it every step of the way. Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. City. Help me, please. There are crimes of passion. Will four cops make a difference? I think he sent us. You bet they will. Bodies of evidence April 2nd. All right, Jim, Mike, and Raf back in New York. Let's take a little walk around the country. First in Tucson. About a minute to go in the first half. A 10-point lead for George Washington in this game, Bill Raftery. Uh, GW putting Sutton on the line. Mike, they only have 33 shots. A long way to go to get 93. But bench scoring for GW, very important. Evans with 10 points early on. So we saw the three up the lead to 13. Now, New Mexico State and Cincinnati playing in East Region action at Syracuse. 7.20 on the clock, you see it. That is not an error. That is 34 to 8, Cincinnati. Mike. Give me a team. You pick to go to the Final Four. Cincinnati defense, defense, and more defense. New Mexico State, when they don't turn it over, which they've done 11 times, 
they can't make a bucket against this swarming Cincinnati defense, which looks very much like one of the top defensive teams in the country. Meanwhile, in the first half, 12 minutes to go, first half, Oklahoma State leads by 10. They had to endure a 21-minute delay because of a, was it a phone outage or a power outage, Mike? Well, it's folks from Xavier calling a dome. <laughs> <laughs> but well, they're back in action here, Raph. What's the story? Early Louisville went inside, and they were very effective, as you see here. It's a matter of hitting shots Oklahoma State able to convert. All right, Wake's within three. We'll get uh, to a couple of those sites coming up at halftime. Back to Tim and Ann. 3.45 remaining first half. Iowa leads by 3.34-31. Tim Ryan and Ann Myers here in Nashville. Lucas and Childress, the backcourt for Wake right now. With Banks, Rogers, and Trelawney Owens up front. Iowa has sent Val Barnes back into the backcourt. Senior starter. And Trelawney Owens from behind the backboard. What an angle on that one. Eight points for him, 34 to 33. Well, if he's not underneath the basket getting rebounds after he's shot on the baseline. A.C. Earl from outside. Eight points for Earl. Earl with Winters. Glasper, Barnes, Millard. The zone defense by the Hawkeyes. Up top, they play a man to man defense. Down on the baseline, they play a zone. And right now, Wake Forest is having a difficult time figuring out whether Iowa is in a man to man or a zone. Wake turns it over. Three-point Iowa lead. Seven turnovers for Wake Forest in this first half with 2.34 to go. Smith in for Glasper. Glasper really did a good job as far as picking up the defense for the Hawkeyes. And looking Bill back in at forward. Number 34, the senior from Fort Dodge, Iowa. Hit two three-pointers to get Iowa off well in this first half. Kenyon Murray back in at forward, number three. Murray with it on the baseline. Run around by Earl off the front of the rim and rebounded by Banks. Well, coming up on Prudential Securities at the half, Jim Nance, Bill Raffrey, and Mike Francesa will all be there and will also take a look in live at this contest Oklahoma State leading Louisville 19 to 11 in the first half Eddie Sutton Denny Crum there's a coaching matchup Childress to the glass one point Iowa lead Murray 38 to 35 you know, for Wake Forest, they've been very patient on their offense. Childress is the one guy, though, that really has to create things out there. He did on the last possession, but he's the one that is going to get things going as far as the passes, the penetration, or the outside shot. Rodney Rogers deep in the corner, elected not to shoot. Lucas and Childress the backcourt. And now he tries from the corner for three, and that's no good. Rebounded by Banks. Travis Banks. Sophomore from Clinton, North Carolina. One point Iowa lead. 38 seconds left in counting. First half. Both teams have shot the ball well from the floor. Wake Forest shot 63% against Tennessee Chattanooga. Interception. Picked off by Banks. Fifteen seconds left. You know, the one thing that's really impressed me in the first half with both these teams in the half-court game, how patient they've been. Rogers missing, looking Bill, rebounding, and the prayer goes up from Barnes. And we have a tight tilt. Zeros are up. Iowa 38, Wake Forest 37. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship continues after this message and a word from your local station. 
CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by AT&T, the right choice. Pizza Hut, who reminds you that anytime's a great time to stop and smell the pizza. And by Bud Dry, for a beer that's refreshingly different, try Bud Dry. Lisa's great, but there's something about Sharon. Sharon's okay, but Lisa, whew, what a knockout. Why is the grass always greener on the other side? You lucky dog. Lucky dog. Oh, why ask why? Try a less filling beer with a lot more taste. Bud Dry, it's one thing. Mm, nice. That's beyond question. Just because you got 2.3 kids. Just because you got a house, a lawn, and a mortgage. Just because you're now a responsible adult. You still know how to have a good time. Don't you? The new Grand Am Sports Sedan. The game of basketball requires hard work, but you need to work even harder to succeed in life. Life is no game. Make smart decisions. Don't use drugs. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. This is CBS. We're talking credit cards with a distinguished panel of experts. You're on the air. When they say I can skip a monthly payment on my Visa card, do they skip a month on the interest? I don't think so. Decatur, Illinois. Yeah, I've got a Visa card, and I think I'm still paying for a meal I ate in 1988. That's called revolving debt. May I suggest the American Express card? No interest, no revolving debt. Reno, you're on the air. Yeah, who's the guy in the metal hat? That's Ed from accounting. Ed, telephone. The LS400 is consistently rated over cars costing thousands more. So you may wonder why Lexus made over 50 new refinements. If at first you succeed, try, try again. Come into your New York, New Jersey, Connecticut Lexus dealer and try one out today. CBS Sports presents Prudential Securities at the Hash. Sponsored by Prudential Securities. The most important thing we earn is your trust. All right, Raph and Mike, it's a one-point game at halftime. Iowa leading 38 to 37. We're going to look in at some action now elsewhere. First, we're headed to the Hoosier Dome, where Oklahoma State leads by eight over Louisville. And back to Dick Stockton and Al McGuire on the microphones with a look at this game. Just under nine minutes to go in the first half. It's been Oklahoma State all the way. Here is James Brewer on the other side. Hopgood, who's just come in the game. And another shot for Louisville. Troy Smith couldn't get the ball up. And now Oklahoma State coming down with leading by eight. So they're matching big bodies out there now. You've got Bennett and Reeves for Oklahoma State and Hopgood and Rozier. Rozier now on the bench. Brewer on the steal. Numbers are right. Morton should score. Two on one, Ooh. but he couldn't control. Dwayne Morton couldn't control, and he's telling Brewer the pass wasn't just right. Nah, Brewer, that was a good pass. The bounce pass was the right pass in that situation. Wow, Cincinnati, Cincinnati 41 over New Mexico State's 9. You know what that means, Dick? Is that their pressure is turning over New Mexico State. And when they start, when they start turning you over, they continue like a barracuda. They need the lights to go out in that building. Yeah, it's not all their offense. But the defense probably created at least half of that. Morton trying to scoop his way in. Looked like he walked the country mile that time. Oklahoma State committing the foul. And it'll be against 
Collins has come in, Terry Collins. So let's check who's in there now. Dwayne Morton will be on the free throw line. He's got James Brewer, Troy Smith, Brian Hopgood, and Greg Miner. Two shots for Dwayne Morton. Leading scorer at 16.6 points a game for Louisville. He's a junior and leads the nation in three-point field goal. And he doesn't have deep rotation, so he got three of the starters sitting out right now, trying to give him two or three minutes rest. They'll be back in before the six-minute mark. Both free throws, so Scott Sutton, Terry Collins, and Von Bennett from the bench in there now. Full court pressure by Louisville. Thompson and Reeves, the only starters in there for the black-shirted Cowboys. I would keep a lot of pressure because you got subs in there, and the tennis is going to turn them over. And they're going to call a foul against Von Bennett away from the ball. For Oklahoma State, that'll be their 15 foul. They don't want this game to become a sumo wrestling match. And the last two call turnovers are called on off screens. Otherwise, you're going to have sumo wrestling. <laughs> Which should only be in Japan, right? I think that's the country. <laughs> Seventh turnover by Oklahoma State. So Oklahoma State leading 21 to 15, the winner of this game, advancing to St. Louis to the Midwest Regional to play Indiana in the next game. An amazing score in Syracuse, Cincinnati and New Mexico State, 329 to go in the first half, and the Aggies still have not reached double figures. Cincinnati, the two seed in the East, so strong looking here today. Southern and George Washington. George Washington scored the first 10 points of the game, and they now lead by 10 at halftime. They're about to start the second half, in fact. Now, earlier today, Indiana won by three over Xavier. Many of you saw that game. Al McGuire raised a, a controversy at the end of that contest when a no call was made on a possible five-second violation that would have given Xavier the basketball back with a chance to tie it. Take me through it, Raph. Well, what happened? Damon Bailey, using great judgment, understanding of the game, takes his time to pick the basketball up and go out of bounds. But the judgment of the official, and this is strictly a judgment call, as the shot is nailed to get it to three, Xavier with a chance if they should steal the ball or get a violation. Bailey looks up, nice pace, steps out of bounds. The official out of bounds is about to start a count and then stop. And this is where the problem arise they get down as and Al's pretty close almost seven seconds in his count until you release the basketball but Bailey with great understanding of the game was able to maybe cheat a little bit on the clock oh, yeah, it was and great. help Indiana the great great the way you telestrated that where he looked up at the clock and in fact after the game Damon Bailey was asked about that situation at the press conference listen to what Damon Bailey had to say about that situation you know, you do have a little time that you can go get the ball, and it just so happened that the ball did, you know, go out to the free throw line or about the top of the key, uh, and, you know, that was something that was fortunate for us. You know, I went out and got it and came back and took it out, and, you know, like I said, I did take my time, but it was something that, uh, you know, we were aware that they didn't have any timeouts. So chalk it up as a smart play, brilliant play by Damon Bailey. 30 wins now for Indiana on this season for the first time since 1987 when they won the championship in New Orleans. Terrific play by Bailey, and I thought Indiana had trouble getting into its offense. The movement wasn't there the second half. One thing I'm noticing, though, when you go through these rounds, Indiana, Seton Hall yesterday, these other teams that you don't see that much during the season, Xavier or West Kentucky, very quick. They give them a That's big problem with their quickness. Speed is a problem, but uh, Indiana is so tough with their screens and defensively taking you out of what you want to do, and that wins championships. That speed and quickness, that's what Cincinnati is all about. All right, the game you're watching at the half, it's 38-37 Iowa, and coming into the day, the two experts here circled this one as one that was destined for a close finish. I'm going to go right for a change. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I can't First time, I, I was pressed to something I think that concerned for Wake, but two great players, Rodney Rogers and the Duke of Earl. Ooh, Fine performance uh, uh, down wait, on the box. Waiting for you to reach down for that one. Give you a little pop. AC. All right, we'll continue here on CBS On the Road to the Final Four. Stay with us, everybody. CBS Sports presents Prudential Securities at the Hash. Sponsored by Prudential Securities. The most important thing we earn is your trust. Yeah, I looked at the BMW and the Lexus. And? I drove this. The power, the handling, the control. It was incredible. Really? It's got leather, ABS, dual airbags. It's even supercharged. I could have spent a lot more on the BMW or the Lexus. But why? What is this? The new Bonneville SSEI. We are 
Very nice. My full-time job is as a director of special services at Keensburg School District in New Jersey. It's a K-12 school district. My responsibilities range in the area of special education and counseling. I've been officiating college one-level basketball now for 18 years. Uh, from way back in grammar school, I played grammar school basketball, high school basketball, and it's always been my favorite sport. Um, the, uh, it seems to be the most exciting game. I find that the, the competitiveness that's in in playing basketball is alive as you're officiating. Communication is important during a game, and I think communication with players helps them adjust to the game. They know you're human, and you can talk with most of them and work with them. We strive in officiating to be in the right spot at the right time, working to get the appropriate angle so that we are uh, working as hard as the players are. In basketball, we strive, uh, as a player does, for perfection. This message provided by the NCAA. A party of uncommon elegance requires a chef with the ultimate good taste. How to chop you up and throw you in the bouillabaisse. base. An all-new Northern Exposure, Monday. We have a one-point game here in Nashville, Iowa, leading 38 to 37. We'll be back to Memorial Gymnasium with the second half after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Want to run all your software fast? Then look for the Intel Inside symbol on your next computer. It says you've got a real power source on the inside. Like the upgradable Intel 486 microprocessor. Power it up and run your software at light speed. Intel, the computer inside. In December, Motor Trend chose the all-new Mazda 626ES as a best buy in sports sedans. They praised its handling, standard airbag, room for five real-sized humans, and sporty Luxo surroundings. Wonder what they'd say about a Mazda 626DX for $199 a month with a thousand down. The $199 lease. But it's only good until May 3rd. So hurry. If your spouse was accused of poisoning your child... I didn't kill my baby. Would you believe she was innocent? I never stopped loving you. Lisa Hartman Black, without a kiss goodbye, tonight. When the city... Stop these crazy people out there from killing each other. ...gets too hot. We're cops. Here to clean up the mess. Lee Horsley and the top homicide team... I'm forming a task force, Ryan. ...investigate crimes of passion. Somebody gets away with murder. Bodies of Evidence returns Friday, April 2nd. This is CBS. You're witnessing a highly sophisticated conversation. It's between the BMW 325i and the driver. It's not based on the language of words, but of feelings. How the wheel feels to the fingertips. How the pedals feel to the foot. How the seat feels to the body. But what's truly amazing isn't that this entire conversation took place in just 2.7 seconds, but that it took place at all. To me, it's rhythm, man. All rhythm. It's like flip ba 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 Life's a tune, man. You can play like everyone else, or you can soar. The cage by feeling. See how it plays. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Mazda. It just feels right. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it.
and by Intel, a computer inside. Welcome back to Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the bands are playing here at halftime. We're about ready to go with a one-point Iowa lead. Over Wake Forest, Tim Ryan with Ann Myers here at Memorial Gymnasium, Vanderbilt University, and a well-played first half. Both teams shooting well from the floor. It's as tight as we expected. Do you get any feel for a trend here for the second half? Well, nobody's really can set the tempo. I mean, it's been a slow pace, and we've seen a couple bursts, but I tell you, both teams are shooting the ball so well that the big thing that I see is the rebounds. Wake Forest with 13, and Iowa with 7, so there has not been much rebounding because of how well both teams have shot. Tom Davis continues to use his substitutes very well, even though he is missing two of them today with the flu, Jim Bartles and Kevin Skillett. As you can see, both teams shooting well, 65% for Iowa, 64 for Wake Forest. No complaints from the coaches there. And rebounds, uh, an interesting story, because Wake Forest out-rebounding Iowa, the top team in the country in that department. And at the moment, uh, Rodney Rogers with 13 for Wake Forest. And Wade Looking Bill got off to a real good start, but he cooled off. He had 10 of the first 13 Iowa points, hitting two three-pointers at the beginning of the game, having scored in the last 11. He's not a guy they look to to do the scoring for them, so that's been a bonus so far. The, the guys who can score got to crank it up in the second half, but Iowa leads by one. And the one thing you noticed also, Tim, was that 8-0 with eight points had no rebounds. So Wake Forest has done a good job keeping him off the boards. And we'll see if Iowa picks things up, not only defensively in this half, but whether they can hit the boards and be strong. Wake Forest and goal defending to our right, Iowa and White to our left. Childress, first shot of the second half, drop for him, rebounded by Rogers. Another big rebound by Rodney Rogers. And Wake Forest now with 14. Rogers had 26 points and five rebounds in the victory over Tennessee Chattanooga in round one. First foul on Harrison, and then Barnes to the line for Iowa. Bell Barnes has been very quiet, only three points in that first half. He really has not looked to shoot the ball. Dave Odom, way down at the other end of the court from the action. Barnes is the first. Here we'll see on the other end, you see how Rodney Rogers uses that big body to really get A.C. Earl out of position to get that rebound. A.C. Earl's working hard to get position, but then he's got to go up and get the ball. One, two, three. I'm wondering about the hair on the back of A.C.'s neck. He has the name Street inscribed, literally uh, shaved into his hairline. This personal tribute to his late teammate, Chris Street. Well, you look at Iowa, kind of a sympathetic favorite as far as Chris Street dying. And, and he died in the middle of the season. I kind of compare it to like the Hank Gathers back in 1990 with Loyola and Bo Kimball. And they made it to the final eight. And I think, because I had done their games the year before, nobody believed that Paul West could, could have his teams run like they did. They got a shot off every under seven seconds. And nobody in the country believed that they could play like that. And I really think they could have gone to the Final Four if they had not played Las Vegas. Las Vegas ended up winning the national championship that year. But Hank Gathers was such an emotional thing. And that was towards the end of the season when he collapsed and died. Well, these are uh, young men, of course. And uh, there is a lot of emotion involved when you've got college kids, in effect, playing in the NCAA tournament. And the fans and teammates alike remember Chris Street. Rogers foul by Looking Bill, and Rogers misses the first of his free throw tries. Rogers, a 71% shooter from the line, and Wake just a two of six so far. And you know, there's almost also a comparison to Tim as far as both players, Hank Gathers and Chris Street. They were such charismatic people. Everybody loved them. They were so sweet to you know, all their friends and anybody they met on the street. Looking Bill trying to drill it in there to winners who couldn't hold it. We're tied at 40. Turnover goes to Wake Forest. Charlie Harrison, transfer from Georgetown, a junior, working the backcourt. And a foul away from the ball. Winters 
James Winter is really getting caught behind defensively that time and not be able to make up. He's going to pick up his third personal. And that's a key because Winters is a, is a good defensive player and he's one of their big rebounders. He just cannot afford to get frustrated. He's going to come out of the game right now with Murray coming into the game. But Winters is a big player for Iowa as far as getting a lot of rebounds. Of course, there haven't been too many rebounds to get because of how well both teams are shooting. And he contributed 12 points in the victory over Northeast Louisiana in round number one. So Kenny Murray comes in for him, the freshman from Battle Creek. They lose a little experience there, but Murray played well in game one. Murray also a big jumper, just like Winters. Good by Childress. Lukenville got caught the first time, left his feet, and then was behind defensively, and you think he would have stayed on his feet. Instead, Childress, a smart player, saw Lukenville go up in the air, and he just kind of he created the bump. And that's that three. Foul. Three on Lukenville. And that's the second jump. Lukenville just should have stayed on the ground. All he had to do was reach, and he knew he made the mistake. We're just underway in the second half, tied at 40, 18-28 to go. And Wake Forest at the line in the gold uniforms. Childress fouled by Wade Lookingville to pick up his third for Iowa. They now have two players in foul trouble. Nine points for Childress and a two-point Demon Deacon lead. Kevin Smith driving hard. Iowa looking to pick up the pace a little bit, bringing that ball up quickly. Al Barnes working the baseline, nowhere to go. The crowd thought they were going to get into it. <laughs> Sell out crowd, 14,600, and most of them are Kentucky fans. They'll be later against Utah. What a big shot by Kevin Smith. Three points, Iowa by one. Kevin Smith has been very solid at that point position for the Hawkeyes. Harrison for three. Yes. Charlie Harrison, the junior from Washington, D.C. I was slowing it down. Smith and Barnes in the backcourt now. Millard, A.C. Earl, and Murray up front. Inside Earl, he's got it. Ten points for AC Earl. This press really has not bothered Wake Forest that much. It's not been an aggressive press. They've been not. Iowa has not been able to trap out of it. And there they get the first trap. But Wake Forest has been very patient. Once they break it, you can see Hicks kind of bring it back out. Rodgers for three, hasn't hit from there, off the front iron. Maybe one of the first times or the few times that Wake Forest has had a yeah, poor percentage yeah. shot. Good hands by the guards by Wake Forest trying to create some havoc. Good recovery there. by Smith, really lost it. He was double teamed by Harrison and Childress. You can see that middle is wide open against that zone. Murray for Barnes, he's got room. Rebounded by Wake. All you see is gold jerseys under there going up for the boards. There are kicks. Hawkeyes have not been able to crack that baseline line of Wake Forest to get the rebound. Harrison from Rogers. Earl rebounds. First rebound of the game for AC Earl. Smith. Murray down on the ground. He's getting back up, but big bucket by Smith. 47-45, Hawkeyes. Rogers got away with that. Oh. pass and Childress. Good call by the official. Offensive goaltending. The ball was bouncing way up high. Looked like it was going to go back in, and here Hicks gets the ball. Uh, yeah, hand on it. I think he had that basket. So bad break for Wake there. 15-37 to go. Second half. Iowa by two. There it is. No basket. Why can't van doors swing open instead of slide? Why do minivans handle like trucks? Why can't they feel more like a car? 
This is what the engineers at Mazda wondered when they designed the MPV. Because when you ask better questions, you tend to come up with better answers. Why does your door do that? The Mazda MPV. It just feels right. We're talking credit cards with a distinguished panel of experts. You're on the air. When they say I can skip a monthly payment on my Visa card, do they skip a month on the interest? I don't think so. Decatur, Illinois. Yeah, I've got a Visa card, and I think I'm still paying for a meal I ate in 1988. That's called revolving debt. May I suggest the American Express card? No interest, no revolving debt. Reno, you're on the air. Yeah, who's the guy in the metal hat? That's Ed from accounting. Ed, telephone. If there's a problem getting your 800 calls, AT&T guarantees to reroute them within five minutes to another phone, even if it's in your home. Hello, Sam Salmon. In Nome, that's one of the 800 reasons to choose AT&T 800 service, the best in the business. There is a sound you can hear on the new Riviera. It's the sound of German being spoken by those who converge on Ocean Drive. In your town, America, and the world. Bex, the number one imported German beer. Fitting jeans. A loose interpretation of the original. Can a marriage counselor and a divorce lawyer share an office and still respect each other? People have fun when they're married. And then when they get caught, they wind up single again. Good advice, Friday, April 2nd. Biggest lead in the game has been Wake Forest by seven. It's down to two, and it should have been. A tie ball game again, except for that goaltending call. Derek Hicks just, interference. Got, just got a little anxious that time, but you know that press, what it created was Wake Forest starting to take a quick shot, and I think that's what I would, would like to do is get into a little bit more of a running game and force Wake Forest in an up-tempo game because Wake Forest against that press taking a quick shot. Look at Bill, another big outside shot would force Wake Forest to run with the Hawkeyes, which is what Iowa likes to do. 13 points for Looking Bill. Went to a scoreless drop there, 11 minutes of the first half after hitting two threes to start. 50 45, Hawkeyes by five. The hot hand when he's hit, shooting from the outside. He's got two three pointers in this game. And 12 points on the game for Randolph Childress. Winters back in at forward. Turnover. Childress the feed for Rutgers. Crashing the boards with Winters and Webb. And this is going to be a tough call. It's going to be on James Winters instead of Jay Webb. Jay Webb should have gone right in and said, oh, it's my foul, my foul. Because Winters is going to pick up his fourth personal. It could have gone either way. And if Webb was smart, he would have helped his teammate out. But the starter, Winters, is going to get the foul. But a great, great situation for Wake Forest and dishing it off to Rodney Rogers down the middle. Winters goes out with four fouls, and Val Barnes returns for Iowa. And if you're wondering what the ruckus is inside here, it's the arrival of the Utah Utes. Coming into their warm-up uniforms, identifiable in red. And as we told you earlier, the bulk of this crowd, Kentucky Wildcat fans. As many as 12,000, the estimates are. Good job of securing the tickets by the Wildcat fans. <laughs> they only started with 250, and they've got about 12,000. 14-25 remains here in the second half. Iowa, 50 to 49, and Rogers with a chance to tie it up for Wake Forest from the free throw line. Well, Iowa had defensively picked things up, got a couple rebounds, get some quick shots, and Iowa, if they can get their
their running game going, but again, take good shot selections. Looking Bill, trying for three. Webb on the rebound, and he's fouled. The ball will not drop for him. And that's the quickest shot that Iowa has had all game. They've come down, looking Bill has hit three-pointers for the Hawkeyes. He's got three three-pointers in this game. That one, he just comes up short, but an offensive rebound for the Hawkeyes, and Iowa has gotten beat, which is a big surprise on the boards. Derek Hicks picks up his third. 14-15 to go. Hicks in foul trouble. They don't have a true substitute for him. They would go with Banks, a 6'6 sophomore forward. So we'll be watching that closely. Right now, the teams continue to shoot well. Iowa up to 66%. And uh, utilizing their bench as they do every game, that has been a factor. 52 to 49. Iowa pressing deep now. Well, you saw the uniforms, what team is in what color. Wake Forest is in gold. They were 6-0 and oh at one point. They're 6-2 in their gold uniforms. They have four uniforms. Great pass by Childress, who's done a super job getting the ball inside to Rodney Rogers. And you're not going to stop that. Rogers, 19 points. He had 26 in the first round against Tennessee Chattanooga. But Wake Forest had gone down to Florida State, and they were going to wear their gold uniforms, and Florida, Florida State said, no, no, we got gold. <laughs> and at that point, they'd been 6-2 six, six and two in them. Rodgers picks up the foul, going for the rebound. Good pick right there, and... Luke and Bill trying to get open on the baseline, and you see Murray with the pass, nice pass inside. A little bit of body right there, but it was a good exchange as far as setting picks down there to open up Murray for that pass. And Murray hits. Solid from the free throw line. Now up by three points. 54 to 51. That press has not bothered Wake Forest in the first half. In the second half, they pick things up a little bit to try and break that press as far as breaking it quickly and then taking a quick shot. And they took a couple four percentage shots. Childress. And with Childress handling the, the things as far as the offense is concerned, things get settled down. Travel call against Randolph Childress. Nine turnovers by Wake Forest. Childress does a good job penetrating to the basket. He thought he got the defensive call as far as the foul was concerned, but they saw the officials a little shuffle of the feet. He averages nearly 20 points a game. He's a key performer. He's a fiery guy out there. He keeps everybody pepped up as well. Well, he can miss his first three, four shots, and he'll go by Dave Odom and say, I'm hot, coach, I'm hot. Ohio State on top of women's play. Auburn 59 53, and Stephen F. Austin leading Clemson. And Virginia on top of Florida. Number two seed. There are three women's teams that are still in, with the same as the men Iowa women and men, Vanderbilt men and women, and North Carolina men and women. He might be able to get a foul out of that. Childress going the distance. What a great play by Randolph Childress. Defense was not back, and he just took it to A.C. Earl, the leading shot blocker in the Big Ten. 14 points for Childress. Iowa by one. Glasper and Barnes in the backcourt now for Iowa. And that's been the big advantage when Iowa has missed him. Stephen Deacons have been able to get the rebound and kick the ball out whether they get a fast break but at least they can set up in their half court game and that has hurt Iowa they have not hit the boards Earl bounce pass for Looking Bill and he connects Looking Bill 15 points now his career high is 18 against Minnesota this year 56-53 Hawkeye lead 
Eleven twenty to go. Childress for three. We're tied at 56, 17 points for Randolph Childress. Barnes. Barnes! Wake Forest again doing a great job screening out. Iowa just has not been able to get on those offensive boards. Delaney Owens came up with that one. Lucas and Childress, the backcourt pair now for Wake. Picks that it knocked away. Good recovery. Last for all over him. Good defense. They're going to call a foul on Glass for reaching in, but defensively, they were able to stop Rodney Rogers from taking that baseline, but Rogers recouping, making a good pass down low. First on Glass for Owens will go to the line. <laughs> While the fluid styling of the Mazda 929 may be timeless, the 929 personal lease offer is considerably shorter because now you can lease the 929.